I'd like to welcome you to the uh, TABE Thursday presentation today. Uh, you probably have noticed that right now I have all of your phones on mute to keep any of that background noise uh, away that may distract you from hearing the presentation clearly. But if you have any questions or comments during the presentation, you can use the chat button located in the bottom of the screen. Simply uh, type into the chat window and then hit enter and we'll address those comments and questions at the end of the presentation. One last thing I do want to mention before we begin is the session is being recorded today. So after probably a little bit later this afternoon, I'll be sending a copy of the recording as well as the slide deck presented uh, out to the email address that you registered with. Uh, additionally, the webinar uh, will be posted up on our uh, tabetest.com site. There's a section under the uh, tab 11 and 12 a drop down window where it says tab webinar series and uh, every webinar we've done is up there so you can view this uh, uh, later as well and with that i'd like to introduce our presenter uh, today mike johnson uh, mike if you'd like to get us started okay thank you mike and welcome everybody i'll go ahead and get started with um moving our next slide so you should see the screen change and, and i just have up our, our kind of overview slide uh, some of you may have seen this just to review where we're at today. Uh, obviously, TAVE 9 and 10 is no longer under our federal approval list, so that um, is still in use by some programs that are outside of the WIOA constraints of regulations, but um, we will likely have information next year, next calendar year, related to the retirement for TAVE 9 and 10. TAVE 11 and 12 certainly fully approved by the U.S. Department of Education for all three content areas, reading, math, and language. And we're very happy to be the only assessment so far to have approval in all three content areas for the full length of, of the approval, which is seven years. And then TAPE Class E, which is our ESL assessment for adults, we will be launching a pilot um, in February to have TAPE Class E available on our computer-based platform, which is Insight, the same platform that's used for TAPE Online. And so you'll start to hear more information related to that pilot. I know several state directors have already been involved with um, looking at participating in that pilot starting in February uh, with the anticipation of collecting more data related to the, the new objectives for adult ESL from the Department of Education and then having new federal approvals uh, starting next fall for the application period. So um, there will likely be webinars related to that as we go forward. Just a recap of where TABE is used in different programs, and, and most of the people on the webinar today are in the top left corner, which are the WIOA funded programs, and, and using that for, to make measurable skills gain with TABE. But there are workforce programs on the top right hand corner that um, use TABE as well. There are, um, a, there's a large dairy farm in Pennsylvania, there's a trucking company in Tampa. There's a uh, distillery in Kentucky that uses tape for many jobs in, in their distillery. Um, there's police forces in Florida and Oklahoma that use tape as, as part of the process for hiring. I know there's uh, many hospitals that use tape as well for the hiring into some of the nursing professions as well. Um, in the very uh, left-hand bottom corner, correctional programs that use tape. Um, there are correctional programs that are part of WIOA. There are correctional programs that are separate from WIOA. Um, and then programs use TABE in different ways within corrections. I know for the folks in Indiana, if they get a certain score on the TABE test, they, the inmates get six months off their sentence. And if they get a, a high school equivalency in Indiana, which they use the task, task in Indiana, they get another six months off their sentence. So um, TABE's used in corrections, not only just for federal reporting, but also for uh, benefits to the inmates themselves. And then on the bottom, directly on the bottom of the page or in the bottom right hand corner some new areas where TABE or new updates for TABE um, in college placement many community college systems have used TABE in the past for placing students into four credit or non-credit dev ed courses uh, and they've done so with some correlations that you can find on google to the accuplacer or the old compass test and we've been asked by many states to refresh those correlations. They were originally done by uh, the states of West Virginia and Kentucky, and we are in the process of collecting data to re, uh, refresh those correlation studies to have alignments to TABE 11 and 12 to other tests like the ACT or Accuplacer that are used for college placement in many programs. So that will allow adult ed students to migrate or matriculate over to 
community college or four-year colleges and not have to take an additional assessment for placement if they have a, uh, a corresponding TABE score for that. And then in the right-hand corner, uh, high school equivalency testing, we are in the middle of, and we'll talk a little bit about this as we go forward, some correlation studies to correlate TABE to the high school equivalency tests. And this is primarily used for uh, readiness predictions for, for students, but there are some states that are looking at using TABE for, for uh, to supplement high school equivalency tests. I know in South Carolina, they have a new program from the Department of Education that will allow students that receive a, a certain score on TABE level A for reading and math to then be exempt from taking those sections of the high school equivalency test in South Carolina. So shortening the pathway for students and reducing the cost for students. Many programs are just looking for a correlation of TABE to high school equivalency tests uh, simply for a predictor on when they are ready to take those tests. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about that research that we have underway. We also have a partnership that we've announced at COAB, and we talked a little bit about it before in the past, a partnership with Literacy Pro's LASIS data system. So if you're in a state that uses the LASIS data system, uh, we will start to integrate very quickly um, tape data on a nightly basis into the LASIS system. If you're a state that does not use LASIS, we have also started to work with some of those states, uh, so Michigan and Alabama specifically. I know we've started with that, and we have some other states that are looking into uh, that integration in all Atlanta, or I'm sorry, Georgia has started to work with the, that integration as well. These are the states that are, are using the LASIS database system, and the top three in the left hand corner are the first three that are up for the data integration. So very soon, um, for the end of this year, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wyoming will have the TABE data go into LASIS on a nightly basis, and you'll no longer need to hand enter TABE scores into the LASIS database. The remaining states are not in any specific order as of yet, but we're in the process of working with those states to get the training done. Uh, many of those on the list that are not in bold will also be done hopefully by the end of this year, and certainly very early at the start of the new calendar year, all the states that use the LASIS data system that want to, and that's a key, co key component there. Uh, we have, it's not a requirement that we have to import the data, but it's a service that we offer for the states so that they can uh, reduce staff time on that administrative step of entering scores into the LASIS data system. So if, if you're within one of those states, you can certainly look forward to information as we work with the state directors and the data people in those states to get that information transferred over to LASIS. Another update that has recently happened is that we've released a math formula reference sheets that can be used by students and teachers. These reference sheets are for level E, M, D, and A. They were posted within TABE Online. So if you're using TABE Online, the students will see the, a reference icon up here when on the math test. And they also were posted in our TABE portal at the end of last week. They will be posted at tabetest.com by the end of this week. So I will quickly jump over to show you real quick what those reference sheets look like. And here's an example of a level M reference sheet. I'll make that a little bit bigger. Um, you see that this is available, so it will be a PDF document for paper and pencil users that can be printed out, or it's a, it'll be an icon within the TAB online system. Teachers can also have access to this. Jumping over to our DRC portal real quick, if you have access to the DRC portal, which is Insight, that means you're either using TAB online or you're scanning your answer sheets into the, the Insight system. You can access these reference sheets under the general information tab within the portal. So if I go ahead and click on the general information tab and open up the documents section within the, the general information tab, and then just search on show documents. And within the documents tab, you'll notice that um, you can sort this by different columns, but in the middle of the screen, I have table 11 and 12 reference sheets for EMDNA. So you have that reference sheet listed there as well uh, for more resources. I know there's a little bit of an issue with the audio, so I'm going to try to make sure that we get as clear as possible with the, the audio moving forward. 
just to recap on the testing times, I think everybody's been updated on the testing times, but we have reduced our testing times. And this information is posted on tapetest.com. There is a chart that is available that you can download. I also want to emphasize the average times for students. And again, not all students fit in within the average, but more than 90% of the students will be within these average times. And, and we see the average times for, for reading, for example, is 75 to 80 minutes. Average times for language is 35 to 40 minutes, and the average times for math is between 40 and 45 minutes. A couple of the big changes that have happened recently are some updates to our individual reports, but we'll look at those in a moment and go through the updates. But you have access, if you do scan your answer sheets or you use TAPE online, to all the available reports that are within the system. Those are both our profile and our portfolio reports. Also the, the locator report, and then the option to have a roster report or have a local exporting uh, of your file out to Excel. So those are all within the Insight portal and you can have access to that. A Couple of the key updates that we've made recently in the individual profile are in the red boxes on the screen on the sample report. The first one in the top right is to the addition of a measurable, measurable skills gain column. And it's a simple yes or no. And it is based off of the federal program year that starts on July 1st. So the system will track a student. And if they've tested between July 1st and June 30th on the two tests within the reading, for example, on the screen right now, this student, we see that it's listed as a yes. That means they've previously taken a, a TAVE reading test and they've improved their NRS level on this test. So again, it, it tracks from July 1st going forward for each program year. So if a student has tested in March and then again in, in October, it would not show up here as a yes because that is across two program years. So again, just a general information indicator that will help teachers and administrators very quickly know if this student has made a gain on that level of, of TAVE. At the bottom of the screen, this was an update that was done about a couple months ago that we added the point values for each of the domain areas within each content area of TAVE. So we see on this level M report that reading has three main areas, key ideas and details, craft and structure, and integration of knowledge and ideas. And now we see how those point and the number of questions, and then the points related to those questions. So we can see the first one, there's 18 questions and 18 points total, but under craft and structure, there's 17 questions and 20 points total. So we know that there's a few, three questions that are worth two points on that, on that section of the test. So just a different type of question being used there. The bigger update has happened on the second page of the individual profile, and again, this is just updated about a week or so ago with the addition of our areas for next focused column. So we're looking at the, the skills that are covered within table 11 and 12, and what skills has the student demonstrated proficiency on, and what skills do they have for their area of next focus. And you'll notice that these definitions are also expanded a little bit to align to the College of Career Readiness Standards. But just a quick point of reference, the first area of uh, the domain is key ideas and details. If I go back to the previous report, key ideas and details was an area that I was proficient on. And it does say that in the report on the second page that I have proficiency. I have proficiency at level M of tables, I'm sorry. I have proficiency at level M of TABE. So here are the skills that were covered on level M of TABE on my proficiency area, but here are my areas of next focus. And because I was proficient, my areas of next focus are uh, skill areas for level D of TABE. So again, once I've reached that proficiency level on a specific level of TABE, my areas of next focus would be related to the next higher level of TABE. Now, if I was non-proficient on this, key ideas and details, my areas of next focus would be the areas that I perform poorly on on that level M test. So again, as an indicator, you will see my demonstrated skills and my areas of next focus based on the proficiency is, um, for that section of the test. 
As I mentioned earlier, we, we had talked about college placement, and this study is ongoing within our research team. The college placement um, study will align TABE to the active placement test and to the uh, ACT test. The work going on right now is to collect that data, and we have to have students that have taken TABE and then gone on to take one of those assessments within about a 60-day time frame. So, uh, with these college placement tests, they have the bulk of their testing happening at the start of each college year or each college semester. So we want to make sure that uh, we're getting that information uh, collected during this next uh, spring semester that starts in January. So we'll be collecting more and more data as we go on related to that. Not every program will use these correlations. This will just be information that we publish. So the information will be available and each college will, or each college system will use this data in specific ways. In Kentucky, for example, they currently use TABE uh, reading and language for TABE 9 and 10. And, and they're looking for this correlation study so that they can use reading math and language in their placement decisions within the community college system of, of Kentucky. The high school equivalency study is underway and is ongoing. Uh, I'm going to jump back to our website real quick just to talk about the high school equivalency study. And I'm going to go to tabetest.com this time. And under tabetest.com is all our resources related to TABE. Up at the top of the screen under the drop down bar, there's a, a drop down menu for TABE 11 and 12. And as I go over to the next screen, there's a TABE to task concordance. So we have completed the concordance for TABE to our task test. And you can certainly review this information a little bit more after the webinar is done. But I will scroll down through the narrative of this. And as it goes through, we'll talk about how the, the data was collected, but I'm going to get down to the charts. And this chart will be very similar for GED, which is our next related study to be released, and then also for HiSET. So again, this is related to task data and task skill scores. So the numbers will change when we switch to GED and a high set, but the, the outline of the, of the chart will be the same. And what we're looking at, just for your reference, the passing score on our task test is 500. So if we look in areas where we see a task score of 500, um, it's shaded in green. And when they're below 500 at the lower limit, it's shaded in yellow. Um, and then if we get even further below, it will have it shaded in white for that, those areas. So again, our predictions, if we go up to the top, will be for level A and D of TABE. This happens to be the reading test, and we'll have correlations for reading and math. And we'll have a lower limit, a predicted score, and an upper limit based on the standard error of measurement of, this, of the study. So a student today that gets a 510 on the reading test for, for TABE 11 and 12, would have a predicted task score of 515, which is above the passing score. Their lower limit is 500, their higher limit is 530. So we see that that is all within the green area. And we can see the yellow areas where your predicted score is still within the passing area, but your lower limit is a little bit below the passing score. So that's why it's a yellow shaded area uh, for, for the predictions related to passing. Again, the GED one is in the process of collecting the data. A high set, we've, we've collected some data. We need to collect a little bit more data for the research scientists to, to analyze. And those correlations will be published just in the same spot that I was at on their website. So we'll have our TABE 11 and 12. And we'll have a TABE to GED concordance and a TABE to high set concordance uh, posted as those research projects is uh, finalized. I'm going to jump back to our PowerPoint here. And again, th those correlations can be used by anybody as a predictor of readiness for high school equivalency in reading and math. And then states are looking at using that data uh, in some policy changes, as I mentioned with South Carolina, having an, to implement a program already for TABE level A and a pathway for high school equivalency. So other states are looking at that data as well. And, but those are state level decisions that will be made by each individual state. Another area that I'd like to request some support in is the, uh, uh, some best practices. We, we were looking to share some success stories from around the country. 
So if, if you or your program has been doing something new or innovative, we would love to hear about it. Um, whether it's making uh, measurable skills gains with new strategies that you've implemented, new curriculum that you've in, implemented, uh, we would certainly like to hear about that and, and possibly highlight that in some success stories that we post on our website as well. Maybe you're doing something new with your intake process. We've certainly talked to a lot of programs that have changed the way they do, do their intake based on the new updates to table 11 and 12. Uh, maybe you've just changed the, your professional development with your staff on how they understand table 11 and 12. Certainly any best practice that you have, we're more than welcome to, to listen to. You can send those best practices directly to me. Uh, my email is listed there. I'll ha also have my email on the, the last slide. So you have that information again. But you can always go ahead and just send us a, just a brief overview of what we're doing. We can pass that on to our marketing people and they'll you know, do a little bit more digging and kind of build out that success story for us. And we can certainly promote that with other programs that are looking to implement other changes as well. So um, we know that many programs had a lot of established practices with Tape 9 and 10 over the 15 years that it was available. And, and now it's time to kind of update those best practices. And we want to spread the news across the country for all the programs that are using Tape 11 and 12 um, in many different ways. I'm going to leave this slide up. This is my last slide. Again, has my email. It also has our phone number for our support team. If you're having any issues with your scanners, with your Tape Online system, you can always contact our support team for any help on those areas. And then also tabetest.com. We jumped out to that website briefly to go through that. That's always the best place for resources related to TABE. The testing times charts are there. The information on the correlations to high school equivalency will be posted there. The um, math formula sheets will be posted there later this week. So a lot of information on tabetest.com. I wanted to spend a, a, a fair amount of time on the questions and answers that people might be putting in the chat screen. So we'll go ahead and start going through that. And again, if you have a question, I know we had some challenges with the audio, but if you have some questions um, that you'd like to ask, I'm more than happy to, to go through those questions right now. All right. Uh, there's uh, quite a few questions. Let me, I'll just start uh, with the first one, Mike. The question is, after scanning a paper test, when printing on demand roster for the locator for table 11 and 12, the date shows up is the date report is printed, not necessarily when the locator was taken. Is there any way this can be changed to reflect when the test was taken? Yeah, we can we can double check that real quick um, with our development team. I want to go back and I know this question was related directly to the locator, but on the individual report we do have a line for report date and a, a line for test date which you can see is different and so i will double check that for the locator um, report and see what we can get updated for a testing date related to that um, there is also uh, a locator report that may have it on there and i will double check that as well all right let's see uh, another question uh, can you give the reference sheet to students when taking at a TABE? Yes, yes. The reference sheets are available for both students and teachers to use. Students during the testing process, teachers during the, the, the instructional phase. So you can use those reference sheets in, in any, any manner that you need to. All right. Uh, another question. Someone would like to know why the terminology was changed on the diagnostic reports and whether we have a chart that correlates the new terminology with the original terminology. Sure, and so, um, and I will again jump back to that just to point that out while we're talking. On the individual profile report, these skill areas, uh, the skills listed both under the demonstrated skills or the, or the uh, areas for next focus are now uh, more the official wording of the college and career readiness standards in the skills in the subdomains within the college and career readiness. What we had on the previous report was a, um, for lack of a better word, a TABE 9 and 10 definition of these skills. So we, we tried to shorten them up and, and make them a little bit more TABE-like instead of college and career readiness-like uh, for the transition from TABE 9 and 10 to TABE 11 and 12. Many people, again, were very familiar with the skills listed in TABE 9 and 10. And so 
we, we used a shortened version. Um, when we went to this demonstrated skills area, we went back to the college and career readiness full definition. We are working on a, a, a side by side comparison that we will post to tabetest.com shortly. So you'll see the overlap or the or the comparison of the two definitions of the skills. Um, again, those will be posted at tabetest.com. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, next question. Uh, can you give any updates with regards to archiving sessions? Uh, I guess they're looking to not have to scroll through hundreds of sessions to find something. Sure. So this is specific to Tame Online customers. Um, and we are in the process of getting ready to archive all Tame 9 and 10 sessions. And so that information will uh, be archived. I don't have the exact date, but it is being worked on right now. So it will be happening very shortly. And then the next step of that is to be, allow for the archiving of uh, other sessions. And what will happen is that th that archiving will most likely happen by the dates of the session. So today you may have a test session that is open for a whole year. Um, some programs have test sessions only open for a semester or for a month. But as, as the second update to the this test session that we're working on, it will look at that date, and if the if the test session has expired, meaning the date has passed, then it will move to an archive state. So as that update happens, again, that's our second update that we're working on. The initial update will be get rid of all tape nine and ten, uh, not get rid of, but archive all tape nine and ten information, so that we'll have that first be removed out of your system, and then after that working more on an ongoing archival system based on the dates of the test session. All right, let's see, another question. Uh, someone like to see the, uh, the uh, task uh, scores uh, from TABE in a math uh, that chart you had up earlier, if you could pull that back up. Someone sure, I'll to go see back that again. under tabetest.com. Tabetest.com under the resource tab for table 11 and 12, the chart, the, the first correlation that we published is our tape to task correlation, concordance. And again, the GED and the high set are being worked on, but just as I scroll down to this one to the chart that we showed earlier, um, and this one is for reading. So a student that gets a tape 11 and 12 reading score of 500 would have a predicted passing score on task of, of 515. And again, the passing score for task is 500. So if I went down a little bit farther in the yellow area, I can see my predicted score goes down to about a 487 on TABE 11 and 12. Now, the lower limit is not passing on TABE, so that's why it's in the yellow shaded area as um, not as likely to pass as the green area up at the top. But again, that information is posted on this tape to task concordance and the tape to GED and tape to high set will be posted uh, in the near future as those studies finish up. All right. Uh, someone would like to know if tape 11 and 12 is more rigorous than tape 9 and 10 and whether uh, we did any uh, uh, studies to demonstrate more rigor. So it certainly is more rigorous. Um, that I think everybody has, has kind of or been able to see. Uh, it is more rigorous because the U.S. Department of Education's uh, college and career readiness descriptors for the NRS have become more rigorous. So in order for TABE to receive the full federal approval, we have to align to those NRS descriptors. And, and that is a key point um, on, the, on the level of difficulty or, or the change in rigor on the test. And so we, we do see that big change. Um, as far as a study related to the change, there has not been an official study. I know anecdotally there's programs that will say that, you know, each level of TABE has kind of moved up one level. So what used to be E is now M and what used to be M is now D um, and so forth for that. But we have not had a, a, a direct relationship because TABE 9 and 10 did not align to the college and career readiness standards. So they were aligning to old national standards. Um, and, and so there was not a, a direct comparison for that. All right. Um, someone would like to know how long uh, tape tests are good for. 
Sure. So a TABE test does not have an expiration date, but the program's use of TABE may set an expiration date. Uh, again, your score that you receive on a TABE test is your score of today, you, at your proficiency levels as of today. If tomorrow you go into an eight hour training, that changes your proficiency. But if you now move into no, you know, no instructional programs, that changes your, your proficiency probably less. So your TABE score is what it is on the day that you test. How valid that score is for reporting purposes uh, is up to each state to decide in their assessment policies. But there is not an expiration date for TABE that we set. All right, uh, let's see, next question. Uh, someone would like to know how do, uh, how do we determine a total battery score? Sure. So a total battery score is, is a TABE 9 and 10 reference to a score. And what that was under TABE 9 and 10, and it took your scale scores for reading, math, and language, added them together, and divided by three. Now, it did not take into account that you took a level E reading test and a level A math test and a level M language test. It just took three numbers and added them together and then divided it by three to have a total battery score. Uh, because of that, and not really being a, a, a scientifically valid score uh, related to the different ranges that a student took, you know, again, I could be in first grade for reading and in high school for math, you know, is my average eighth grade. Uh, and so it's not a, a scientifically valid number or score because it does, it could incorporate many different levels of the test. That's why it's no longer used in table 11 and 12. Uh, so we do not have that term in table 11 and 12 with total battery score. I know some programs use that in some of their criteria for their students, but it, but it was open to uh, many variables because of the levels of the test that a student may be taking. All right. Um, looks like the next one is actually a comment. Someone just, uh, commented that the uh, portfolio report needs to have the test date on it all as well. Yeah, and I'll double check that. I thought it did have the test date on there. Um, if, you, if you've taken, but I, I will double check that and, and see what we can do on that. Thank you. And next question. Someone would like to know how long they can keep TABE uh, 9 and 10. So TABE 9 and 10, um, if you are using TABE for your WIO of reporting, again, for NRS scores and measurable skills gains, if, if those terms sound familiar, you cannot use TABE 9 and 10. It is no longer federally approved for reporting purposes. But if you're using TABE 9 and 10 for other purposes, um, you can continue using that until we announce the retirement of that. We have not made that announcement. Um, it will likely be sometime next year. It may align with the federal program year. Um, we're not sure yet. It has not been made as a decision, but uh, again, it does not, it won't be around for that much longer in the next year, I, I don't believe. Let's see, there was a uh, question, um, and I can answer this one. Uh, whether this webinar is being recorded, and the answer is yes. After the uh, session is over, probably later this afternoon, I'll send a copy of the recording and slide deck to the email address you registered with. And it, it is also exactly where Mike has the icon um, up on the screen, up on tabetest.com. All of our uh, webinars that we've done are recorded and put under the TABE webinar series. So when you click on that link, you can see all of the webinars we've done. And, you, and they're in uh, chronological order. So today's will be after, um, right, pretty much right where the uh, cursor is. And if you're not, if you happen to get on this webinar because somebody forwarded you to the information, you can always add your name to our mailing list and get the direct notification of when the new, new webinars are being held by clicking on the link and adding your email to the mailing list. Uh, let's see, um, here's another good question. Uh, how should we determine a total battery grade point average uh, as was used in tape nine and ten. Yeah, again, we don't have a we don't have a formal process for that because it is a, a non it's not a scientifically valid score, and that's what the scores that get reported on the report. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the total battery was uh, all three skill scores added together and then divided by three. 
Um, you are certainly open to doing that locally, but we don't have a correlation to the grade point range for those three uh, as they did with Tab 9 and 10. All right. Um, next question. Someone would like to know how how will the uh, map reference page screen look on the testing screen? Uh, I want to make sure my proctors are aware of what to expect so they don't think students are opening up another program during the test when they see the reference page for the first time. Yeah, and that's a good question. And I don't have a screen capture of that right now. I will certainly have that for future webinars that we can discuss. But it is on the screen under the utilities buttons right next to the calculator button. Um, just as a point of reference, when a student is inside the testing window, they cannot open other, other outside windows. Uh, it's a lockdown browser that we use. So the math reference sheets are a, a icon button that they can click on within the um, utility. So similar to the highlighter, the calculator up at the top of the screen, it'll just be another icon for the math reference sheet. All right, um, so another question. It says uh, moving from K nine and 10 to 11 and 12, they've noticed a uh, decrease in scores and they just wanna know why, uh, if you could talk about the difference between nine and 10 and 11 and 12. Sure, sure, and, and there is there is a big difference between the scores um, because the standards have changed so dramatically from the Department of Education. So um, there is not a relationship of nine ten scores to Tave eleven and twelve scores. There is not a relationship of NRS levels between nine and ten and, and eleven and twelve. Um, and the, a student that took a Tave nine and ten test and let's say they scored at an NRS level five may take a TABE 11 and 12 test and score it at NRS level four or three. And, and in the federal accountability world, that is okay um, from the Department of Ed standpoint because that student is, it's a new program year and they're measured year by year. Certainly if a continuing student is in your program, um, you'd like to see those scores always going up. But TABE 11 and 12 did cover brand new standards that are much more rigorous. So. Um, there is a general consensus that student scores from a previous year would be lower than they were with Tave 9 and 10 because it was not measuring as rigorous of standards. All right. Um, someone had a question. They just wanted to know why the grade level is not on the uh, report. Yeah, grade level, again, very similar to the total battery score. The grade level or grade, grade equivalent, as it was called in Tave 9 and 10, is again, not a scientifically valid score. I'd like to say that it was a fuzzy score under tab nine and 10, but um, we do have a resource under the resource tab. If we go to, let me move down there one second. Um, oops. Tab 11 and 12 under the resources. And having trouble controlling my mouse, but I'll get there in a second. Sorry about that. The scale scores and grade range, there it is. And so this scale scores and grade range document will take um, your TABE scale score and align it to a grade range. So we look at the six levels of the federal NRS levels and the grade ranges that they correlate those NRS levels to and then the 12 or 13 grade ranges for the K-12 system. So if I'm looking for a ninth grade range on TABE 11 and 12, it is between a 576 and a 596 on the scale scores. Now, I can only get to a 596 and a, or a 576 on the higher levels of TABE, so I don't have to worry about what level of TABE I'm testing on like you did with TABE 9 and 10. But it's not a great equivalent. It's a grade range for the ninth grade as defined under the new federal standard. And that's a key point. The, what a grade range is different than a grade equivalent is looking at how it aligns to another definition. If I asked the general audience here today to tell me what ninth grade math is, probably 75% of you would say that it's um, algebra one. But there's a portion that will say that it's geometry. Some people will say it's algebra two. You know, some people say that they don't know, um, but a lot of people will relate it back to what they had in ninth grade. 
And depending on when you went to high school, standards and times change. And again, I went to high school in the, in the mid eighties in Wisconsin. So unless you were in my school district in Wisconsin in the mid eighties, you're not sure what was being taught in ninth grade. Uh, other states have other standards. So the grade range is, yes, it's a, it's a very understandable score, but it's not a scientifically valid score. And so that's why we no longer print it on the report as a, as a, as a scientifically measured score. But since it is something that is always looked for, we do publish this. So it is important if you are using these grade ranges to, to note that a 576 and a 596 is the ninth grade range under tab 11 and 12, not under tab 9 and 10. Uh, it doesn't mean the same thing as what tab 9 and 10 called the 9.0 or a 9.5, because that was under standards that were over 15 or 18 years old. So again, Grade ranges are, are helpful if you understand the context of them. And, and these, this context is as measured by today's new college and career readiness standards and as defined by the NRS uh, level descriptors. All right, uh, let's see another question. Is there an update on developing the locator batch score reporting? Um, I don't have an update on that. I kind of assume that that is a question related to maybe having it, that as, a, as an export on the file. And I will double check that um, on that. If you want to send me an, an email directly on that one, I can certainly follow up with you directly on that. And I'll go back to the PowerPoint so you have my email there listed. All right, uh, so another question. Is there any way we can print from within a session so you don't have to search for the session that you just put the student's name in? I don't believe there is a way to do that today, um, but we are looking at a number of different updates all related to the sessions. You know, we've talked about how we can archive sessions or working to archive sessions, but also um, a key area is how to edit within a test session. And this would be encompassed in that area. We would like to be able to put students of multiple levels in the same session. So I am part of the Monday program, but I took level E. Another student is also part of the Monday program and they took level A. You know, can we both be in a Monday session and, and have that by program definition? So that, that's described within internally as being able to edit test sessions. So certainly if we're being able to edit them, hopefully we can make it a little easier to print within them. Uh, as well. So I'll certainly take that back to our development team. All right. Uh, let's see another question. Uh, well, why does a student who gets everything wrong on the level E test uh, still show demonstrated skills? The, I think, I, and I will double check this with our research and our content team, but I think it has to do re with related um, skills from level L. Again, the, the literacy level of TAPE, so by being assigned level E, whether it was by the locator or whether it was because I, I started with level E in my program, there is that assumption that I, I didn't take level L. And so those skills that are covered just in level L are the demonstrated skills. And I will double check that uh, also with our content development team to make sure that that is my understanding as well. All right, uh, another question. Uh, who decides on what TAVE levels are administered? I hear some are administering nine and 10 and others are uh, administering a, a TAVE 11 and 12. So I'll break that into two parts. Um, the only people that can be using TAVE nine and 10 today are programs that are not federally funded under the Workforce Investment and Opportunity Act um, or the NRS funding programs. So if you're receiving federal funding through your state office, and, and you may be in a state that goes through the Department of Education, you may be in a state that goes through the Department of Labor, like New Jersey or Alaska, for example, you may be, or in Texas, it's the Workforce Commission. You may be in a college-based uh, system in Wisconsin, uh, in Georgia, in Louisiana, Mississippi, those, all, all the adult ed programs, the funded programs are administered through the community college system. If you're in any of those federally funded programs, TAVE 9 and 10 can no longer be used. If you're not under the federal guidelines, then you locally 
can decide between TAME 9 and 10 and TAME 11 and 12 until we retire TAME 9 and 10, which will likely happen sometime next year. So uh, who decides? Generally, um, again, it, the question said, who decides the levels? And I'll say the levels are the EMDNA, the levels within each section of TAME. That is done either by the, the locator test or by the local test administrator. But what version of TAME you're using at your program depends on if you're under federal regulations or not. All right, uh, let's see another question. Uh, what is the difference between a post test and a retest? Normally they're probably the same thing, um, but the post test, oh, I'm sorry, a post test and a retest. So a post test is the second test in a program year that a student might take. They take a pretest upon entrance into the program year and then a post test to, to measure gains. A retest is, is done if, if that, test whether it's the pretest or the post test is invalid. And generally that happens if they scored extremely poorly on the test and they don't register a score, then they would have to take a retest on a, on a different level of tape. So generally the post test, some people call it also a progress test, uh, but a post test or a progress test just means that it's the, the next test after an initial screening. And then a retest is, is a retest after a test that was deemed to be not uh, a valid test. All right, let's see, a uh, next question. Uh, why, is, uh, why is passing a level five for reading, but a level six for math? The level five for reading is at the ninth grade level, but the math equivalent to the 11th and 12th grade level. Uh, I, I'm assuming when you say passing, again, I'll, I'll, if you have a follow-up to that, I'm certainly happy to talk directly, um, but you're, you mean achieving a level five. There's not a passing score within TAPE. Um, passing scores might be set by local programs for local uh, requirements, but um, I think I'm looking at this question correctly that you're saying uh, to achieve a level five in reading is a different score um, than a level, level six in math. And and I, I'll have to look at the actual alignments to the content of the NRS, but they should be the same for that. But I'll, I'll dig a little deeper into this question as well, because I think I need some to uh, open up our scoring tables book to look at the different levels for table 11 and 12. All right, uh, so another question. Someone would like to know, is there a way that the test ticket can show the test level and form and subject? Right now, there's not. The test ticket is mainly meant to just allow the students to log into the system. Um, and again, it's it's a little bit of a security feature because we don't want students exchanging test tickets, uh, potentially in a large testing lab. So it's generally just enough information to get the students logged into the system. When they log in, they will be you know shown what levels they're taking, but. Um, if, if, it, if it says I'm taking a level M for math and a level A for reading, maybe I exchange it to somebody that has a level E for reading and I'll do a little bit better for, on their test. So it's always been a security feature just to have the test tickets be the login information for the, the testing platform. All right, uh, let's see. Um... Next question. On the individual profile, will you uh, explain the demonstrated skills column? And it says, we have a student that misses almost all the questions, but it shows that they have demonstrated a number of skills. Are these skills based on a lower level test? Correct. So again, um, depending on what tests they've taken, and I will jump back to that in the PowerPoint here. The demonstrated skills, so I am on a level, this student took a level M. The demonstrated skills relate to level M, but they can also be level E skills that are incorporated within there as well. So they're looking at, because I was assigned, whether through the auto locator or through the local program to a level M, that means I've demonstrated skills at level E already. Um, and so our demonstrated skills will pull from that list as well. So those are the areas of my strengths. And then my areas of next focus are the areas that I need to work on.
All right. Um, let's see. Next question. Uh, someone would like to know if we have a list of correctional facilities that have used TAVE to reduce sentencing. I think the main one that I know of is the state of Indiana. I, I don't know of any others off the top of my head. I know that there are other ones, but I know Indiana, it's a state law in Indiana um, of getting a reduction in sentence for a certain score on TAVE, and then they get a further reduction with their um, high school equivalency as well. There are there could also be county programs that use TAVE for that as well. A lot of them certainly use their high school equivalency for that. Um, but Indiana is the one that I know of off the top of my head. All right, let's see another question. Um, someone would like to know whether TAVE will put a score if it is too low. Um, no, if, if the student performs extremely poorly, then they won't have a, a registered score. And I'm going to jump back to our website real quick for that. And this one, I'm going to look at another handout under the resource tab. Back out of there. So under the resource tab, under table 11 and 12, at the very bottom, there's a skill score, a skill score and a score and best practice guideline. So if I open up this scoring best practice document, I start out with a chart that will show me, and I'll make it a little bit bigger to see here, a chart that shows me the scale score ranges for each level of TAVE. So again, our scale for 11 and 12 is 300 on the low end, 800 on the high end. Those numbers are our own proprietary numbers. They don't align to any other programs. Uh, we do use the same scale for task, but the numbers within there are different. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, getting that 576 to 596 on reading so that I have a grade range of nine, the only way I can get to a 576 is by taking level D or level A on the test. So that's one explanation for that. But I'm going to go to the second page of this chart or this handout, and it will show me the types of scores that are available under table 11 and 12. And this student took reading, math, and language. He, they took level D for all the areas. And on the level D reading test, the student has a scale score, but it has a minus sign next to it. The minus sign is a, a, a visual indicator for teachers or administrators that that student was near the bottom of the NRS level three. So in order for this student to make a gain on the federal accountability NRS levels, they have to jump all the way through level three into four. And that's just an indication that this student is probably not a fast track student. They will benefit from all the instruction you could probably offer them um, because they need to make a full gain through the whole level. On the second test, the math test, the student had a 656 plus. The plus means that they've achieved the highest score on that level of TAVE. And so in order for me to show a gain, again, I'm at an NRS level five, the only way to show a six or to show improvement is to take a higher level of TAVE, to move that up to level A on my next test. So the five, seven, or the, the plus sign means that I cannot get a better score on that level of TAVE. The minus score means that I um, need to make a full gain across the whole level, so I would benefit from full instruction. And then if I do extremely poorly on the test, I would not register a scale score. So on the language test, there was 40 points available the student scored 10 points. And that is not high enough to register a skill score on that level of test. This test was too hard for them. They may have been mislocated. They may have given up. They may have not wanted a test. This is also, if we look at the dates of the test, it was the third test on that day. Maybe they suffered from test fatigue and they didn't want to continue. So you can look into the test a little bit more and see that they only answered a few questions and they got the 10 points. And that was why their score is poor. Or maybe they did answer all the questions, um, but they didn't all they answered the same response, you know, so you might want to look at how that test occurred. As an example, if I would have scored 11 points out of 40, I would have registered a scale score. So I, I purposely have this example at the high end of that cut point for, for language on level D. And you can look at our scoring tables book that's available on the portal and you can see all the areas where the scale scores um, are too low to report, um, where all the raw scores are too low to report a scale score. All 
All right. Let's see. I'm scrolling through the list of questions. There's quite a few more. Um, let me let's see. The next question: If a student uh, if a student post tests and does not make gains, is it practical to reteach in class and then post test again on that same level? Correct. If if a student tested and did not make a gain, then they would need to test on that same level with the alternate form after the appropriate amount of, of instructional time has occurred. All right. Uh, let's see another question. Uh, how can we determine which skills in the areas for next focus are skills for the current level and which ones are for the next level? I think the, the easiest designation for that, and I'm going to jump back to the PowerPoint, and I can I can certainly get this verified by our content team, um, is looking at the performance column on the report. So on the left-hand side, if I'm proficient, my areas of next focus are always going to be the next level above. If I'm partially proficient or not proficient, then my areas of next focus are related to that level of pain. So this example that I have on the screen, this student was proficient in all areas of the first reading. And so my areas of next focus all relate to level D because I took level M. But if I had some that said partially proficient or non-proficient, then it would be related to that test level. All right, uh, let's see, another question. Is there a reason why an overall score is no longer listed on the tape printout? Yeah, I think we've covered that a couple of times. That's the, com the, the complete battery score. And it, it, it was, um, the reason that it's not there is because you're not taking the same level of, te of TABE in every occurrence. So if I'm taking a level E for reading and an A for math and an M for language, I, I'm not getting a, an overall score because I took content that was vastly different in all three content areas. So that's why we no longer report that total battery score like TABE 9 and that tended. Under TAME 9 and 10, it was not a really valid score because it was averaging potentially um, numbers from different levels of tests, but, but it was posted there. And, and for TAME 11 and 12, we took that away because it is not always a valid number. All right. Uh, someone would like you to repeat the explanation about using federally funded uh, uh, for college. Uh, using TAVE 11 and 12 or TAVE 9 and 10? Uh, I think that probably relates to, um, and I'll go there, our college placement study. So we have uh, an important study that's underway to align TAVE to other assessments, and specifically to ACT and ACCUPLACER, which are the assessments that are used for college placement today. That used to be a compass test, but that compass test has been retired. If you go out to Google and search tape to Accuplacer or tape to Compass, you'll find two concordance reports from the early 2000s. One was done by the state of West Virginia, one was done by the state of Kentucky. Those two states plus other states that have used those concordance data um, have asked us to update those reports. So we are in the process of doing that. And it simply aligns TABE 11 and 12 to the, the Accuplacer scores so that a college could be able to, and again, it's a college decision, not our decision, but a college could decide to use TAVE as a placement tool. In Kentucky, they already have that, but their policy relates to TAVE 9 and 10, so they want to have it correlated to TAVE 11 and 12. Uh, other states have um, alignments to or have uh, policies related to using TAVE scores, and this is just in an effort to reduce assessments. If I leave adult education, and go into the community college system, uh, but I, I have a high enough TAPE score, then I could possibly be exempt from taking a placement test. Very similar to a high school student that has a very high GPA, has um, AP classes, they would not be required to take a, a placement test. They would be allowed to register for a, a four credit class. And what that's what the colleges are looking for. Should you be taking that 0980 class or some, some call it 050 class, or do I take a 100 level math class? Um, so, and that's the study that we're under, un, un, under, undertaking right now to complete that concordance. 
All right. Uh, let's see, uh, another question. Someone would like to know if we are going to add the math reference sheet to the online tools training. Yes, I think we're in the process of doing that. That takes a little bit more time um, than just simply adding it to the um, to the actual test, but we're in the process of adding that as well to the online tools training, which is the tutorial for table 11 and 12 online. All right, uh, let's see another question. Uh, when we need a pre and post score, do we use uh, table 11 both times or table 12, or do we do table 11 the first time and table 12 the second time? Um, I think the, the first response is that you follow your state's assessment policy. And in, in most cases, your state's assessment policy will say that you have to use the alternate form of the test when you're when you're pre and post testing. You're allowed to do 11 or 12 for the first test. The next test has to be the opposite of that test. So if I did 12 M on the first test, then my next test would be 11 M. Uh, they can be used in either order of the numbers, but in general, the letters are always the same. Unless I get that plus sign, and that we showed earlier that I would move up on my next test to a, high, a next higher level. So if I took a level level M test and had a plus sign, my next test has to be a level D. But first and foremost, if you're under the federal reporting uh, guidelines, your state has an assessment policy that has the requirements uh, on what needs to be followed for the procedures. All right, uh, there's another question. Someone just wants to verify that this is correct. Um, they wanted to know if regardless of the book level taken, all scale scores should correlate the same when looking at the grade uh, range scale score uh, guidance sheet. And they just wanna know if that's correct. Um, can you repeat that one more time? I think I lost you in the middle of that one. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, let me repeat it again. It says, regardless of the book level taken, all scale scores should correlate the same when looking at the grade range scale score guidance sheet. And they just want to know if that's correct. Correct. And um, I think I still have that PDF open real quick. Let me see. So on this chart that we showed earlier, this is our scoring best practice chart at the top. I'll scroll up here real quick. This shows us that a particular scale score can only be achieved on certain levels of TAME. And the, the opposite of this on under TAME 9 and 10 was that you used to be able to take level E of TAME 9 and 10. And if a student did very well on level E, they would get a very high grade equivalent and a very high scale score. I think it was a high enough to put them in NRS level five. Well, obviously if I'm taking level E, I should not be in the second to highest level federal uh, level. So we now cap the scale scores for each level of TABE. So if I'm taking level E for reading, I can only get scale scores up to NRS level three. So if we look at the grade range, and I know that reading one was 576 to 596 for the ninth grade range. The only way I can get a ninth grade range on TABE reading is to take the level D or A test to get up to that 576. I can't take a level M test and get a 576. So again, if we go to the NRS chart on our grade equivalent chart that we had up earlier, and I don't think I have that one up any longer, uh, so I'll jump back there um, under the resource tab. the scale score and grade range chart. Again, as defined by the NRS, ninth grade reading is starting at a 576 for us. And the only way that you can, you know, the NRS describes or defines ninth grade as NRS five or above. So again, that's, that's why we have it listed on our grade range document that way as well. All right, uh, let's see another question. Someone wants to know, if, uh, is there a way to view raw scores in the reports? 
Yeah, so if I go back on our PowerPoint here and go back to our reports, at the top of the screen, my raw score is the total number of points obtained. So again, raw score in table 11 and 12 is different than the raw score in 9 and 10 because table 11 and 12 has two point questions. So we always now talk about points as the raw score. So for reading level M, there's a total of 47 points possible. And this student obtained 44 of those 47 points. In math, there was 39 points possible. The student obtained 31 of the 39 points. So that is, our, that is the raw score for the student. All right, uh, let's see another question. Uh, someone would like to know why tape nine and 10 is still referenced in the uh, NRS uh, reporting. Um, I'd have to double check where they're referencing it at. But, um, I know on the on the one NRS website that I go to, it only has table 11 and 12 listed. So I, if they want to send me that link, I can certainly look into that with the Department of Education. All right. Um, as another question, it says, I am new to TAVE, and they just want to know if uh, TAVE is nor a norm reference exam. So TAVE um, used to be norm reference. TAVE 9 and 10 was norm reference. And, and the term norm reference means that you produce national normative scores, national percentiles. So TAVE 9 and 10 used to publish a percentile score. Uh, and we don't do that any longer because there was very few people that used those national percentile scores in TAVE 9 and 10. Not a lot of people like to tell an adult learner that you're reading in the fifth percentile of all adult learners. Uh, and so it was not a, a usable score. TABE 11 and 12 is field tested and through a, a representative sample of adult ed students, a correctional ed students, and high school equivalency ready students. So each of the forms are field tested and but not normed in the normative sense. I'm just looking to see if there's any other questions. There's a couple more. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, it says you may have addressed this earlier. I came in late. Why is uh, TAPE considered a high stakes test and doesn't allow instructors to administer the test when the when TAPE is an academic skills diagnostic assessment? Uh, and, and and I think the last sentence there says people can't get a job with a TAPE score or get into college, and and they yeah. could. Um, again, I mentioned that there are several jobs, and you can go out to the job boards and just search on the word TAPE. And and I encourage anybody that would like to get into the the liquor business to, to look at the Jim Beam website. There are many jobs at the Jim Beam Distillery that take a TAPE score to get uh, hired for. Uh, if you go into Florida, there are many of the college programs that in order to get into the nursing programs, you need to have a TAPE score. So um, it is a high stakes test because it, it does relate back to all that environment, but also for the federal accountability and tracking, um, tracking funding purposes. So yes, it is a diagnostics test used for that. And it is also a high stakes test that, um, you know, certainly as we're working with federal dollars and, and federal money that are provided to your programs, um, they need to have the accurate information to track that those levels. All right. Actually, it looks like there's, I'm just looking to see how many more. Um, and I know we're over on time a little bit, so we can certainly capture any of these questions and, and you can certainly send me any questions directly um, for that. But, uh, you know, since we're over, maybe we should uh, end the call here. Yeah. And as, as we mentioned earlier, it will be posted on the website, so you can certainly go back and, and listen to the webinar again, or if you need to have any information clarified, please contact me directly through email, and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. But thank you for attending today.